Breedin' Radio, brought to you by Pertinger Outdoors, your source for all things deer hunting and the rut here in New York State, right in your backyard so you can get up in the stand and pound them all season long. Welcome everybody to another week of Breedin' Radio. This is your host, Billy Harvey, and I am excited because it is uh, it is Halloween as I'm recording this, and this will be posting on uh, the morning of November 1st. So if you are listening now, hopefully you're listening on Friday, November 1st, and we are headed into the first weekend of November, and here in western New York and most of New York, we are receiving a, a humdinger of a cold front right now. So we're actually just getting some high winds, and the weather is changing, and we're looking at uh, a weekend of of highs in the low 40s and lows in the upper 20s. So pretty excited about what this weekend could bring for all of us that are out in the woods. We're hoping to see some uh, some bucks chasing, and uh, hopefully be in the right place at the right time to make it all happen. So uh, this week we've got a few different uh, voices that you'll hear. So we've got. Uh, my brother and I do a quick recap. Uh, Jimmy was successful shooting a doe the other night, so we get to hear that story. Um, we'll hear from Jamie Mann. Uh, he is a, he is a, I guess I'm not sure where he exactly lives. Lives pretty close to where I do. Um, so we'll just say he lives in uh, Strikersville, New York, and he was able to uh, connect with a buck that he's been after for a couple of years now. So we'll hear his story. Um, we've got Zach Eason with us, and uh, Zach is a buddy of mine that I played baseball with in college and uh, we've reconnected uh, over the last uh, few months and been messaging back and forth and um, he gets pretty serious about his hunting and uh, both uh, deer hunting and also he's real big into fishing too so we'll hear from Zach and uh, what he's got going on as he enters his uh, rut vacation and uh, we'll link up with Nate Kennedy and uh, Nate is going to be uh, getting with us every once in a while here to update what he's seen in the north country so Nate uh Nate hunts the Adirondacks primarily, uh, does get down in the Finger Lakes a little bit and in central New York, but um, primarily the North Country. So it'd be good to get somebody from up there to see what they've been seeing uh, when they're out on the weekends, kicking it in the woods to try to get after a whitetail. So uh, that's, oh, and then lastly, we've got my my buddy Connor Holly was on with us last week and uh, shared an encounter he had with uh, some bucks and he was pretty fired up about his opportunities for next weekend and uh he'll share his story so he uh he did get into some excitement last saturday and uh we'll save the story for him to tell so hope you enjoy i hope you're enjoying following along with this again make sure to uh any of your posts or anything on instagram if you want to hashtag breeding them we'll uh we'll follow that along and we'll share it out with the with the group but also uh you know reach out or send us any pictures if you got anything you want to share or if there's anything that uh, you want, if you want to get on the podcast to share a story or um, something along that line. So thanks again for everybody listening and uh, and enjoy and good luck this week and get out there. It should be a good one. What's up, Jimbo? What's up, Slick Willie? How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Happy Halloween. Yeah. Are you dressed up as a mechanic today? Yeah, I dressed up as a mechanic. I'm not really scared of people. Yeah, yeah, terrifying yeah. to me. I'm dressed as a salesman. That's even scarier. Yeah, that is spooky. All right, so uh, we just want to run through kind of what you're seeing. Um, we both are running cell cams, so we're getting uh, you're getting a little you're getting some feedback on your phone there, bud. Hold on just a second. Any better? Yep. All right. All right. So just, just uh, I, you know, you, uh, you shot a nice doe last night. So I want to kind of get the quick rundown. It sounds like there might have been some, some chasing activity going around with that, uh, from what Dad made it sound like. So kind of let you tell that story and then kind of what you're seeing on our, on our cameras and, and movement in general. Oh, they're looking to breed them now. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. It's moved into that time. Um, we got on the stand last night at like 4.30. Uh, I went over to our buddy Howlett's farm there to try to get a doe. And uh, first deer I saw was a little buck just kind of cruising. Uh, he kept on making laps around the woods, basically. I don't know if he was waiting for the does or what. But uh, 
saw some few does feeding around, and then as the night progressed, every time, you know, two, three does would come out, there'd be a buck behind them, and there was probably like 5.45. Um, I heard, or I saw a deer to my right, and I heard grunting, and then I couldn't see anything, but there was three that came running across the trail, and then I couldn't figure out where the grunt came from. Probably five minutes later to my uh, south side, uh, there was a nice two-and-a-half-year-old eight-point chasing a doe through the woods. Then shortly behind them was his little spike. Didn't know what the hell he was doing, but he was chasing like hell, too. It was funnier than that. <laughs> and uh, the eight-point must, must have broke off and went to find something else, and the spike just freaking ran her ass around the woods like crazy. It was hilarious. And then it was uh, pretty slow for probably the next half hour, and then I had three does come up on my north side, and I heard the grunt right behind them, and uh, he stepped out, and he was a big son of a bitch. He had over a 20-inch spread. Um, his G2 on the left side was broken, and he had some short tines on the right side. I don't know if he was broken over there, too, but... I mean, even with the times that he had, he was probably 130-inch deer. And he just wow. came up behind those three does and just stood there in this kind of brush pile from the logging that was done up there. This is where Greg shot his buck back from week one. Um, okay. So it was kind of in a brush pile to the north, and it just stood there for like 10 minutes just standing there looking. And uh, one of the does had gone all the way across in front of me to my west, and there was a logging road that we walk in on from the west, and the tree stands right in the intersection of the logging roads. And uh, she, when she hit the logging road, she started feeding, and she fed right back to the base of my ladder. And uh, I was trying to videotape the buck, but he was just too far away to get good video. I got him a little bit, but it's blurry. Um, and he kind of started to walk west, and she was walking right up to the base of my ladder, so I put the phone away, and she kind of played cat and mouse with me for a few minutes. She could tell something wasn't right, but uh, she definitely couldn't figure out where I was, and she turned to walk away, and I just smoked her like eight yards right through the heart. So she ran off and piled up, and I turned around. There was another one walking in, and that thing cut must have cut off to the west because it was coming right down the trail to me. But um, the way that brush pile is to the north that he was standing in when I shot, I couldn't really tell where he went. I didn't hear anything run off, but he might have just been heading off to the west where I couldn't see him. But I gave it a few minutes and got down, went and got her. And um, The cell cameras, uh, they're really showing mostly nighttime activity at camp. It's a lot different when you're back hunting these farms than it is when you're down at camp, it seems like, in the big woods. So it seems like a lot of the movements at night. Um, last night at like 7.30, I got uh, a buck chasing a doe in the middle meadow there on my cell camera. It was a nice little, probably only a year and a half, eight point. But um, he was running her, and then there was a spike behind them. And then about 1.30 in the morning, I got a uh, nice doe walked by. And then one minute later, a real big buck walked by. And it's hard to tell which one he is because he's walking, you know, crossways in front of the camera. You don't see a spread or points or anything, but he's tall and had a hell of a body on him. So he was right on right on her, following her across the property. So um, then this morning at 530, there was another one that came through um, heading back north. So couldn't he was kind of far off on the picture, but it looked like he had a decent rack on him. So they definitely been doing some cruising now. Yeah, like you said, I think they are moving primarily at night up there, From at least from what our cameras are, are running. And what's pretty cool is Jimmy and I, we have our we both have our cell cameras set up up in Naples at our camp. And uh, and they're not more than, what, 300 yards apart, if that? Not even. I mean, not, not that far. A couple hundred. Yeah. And but like, I'm getting pictures that he is not getting, and he's getting pictures that I'm not getting. So... It's not like the deer are, they're going from, you know, point A to point B. They're kind of wandering around. And in my, in where my camera is, there is not a scrape. Um, there always was a scrape there, and the, there was a grapevine that, it was kind of a community scrape inside this thicket. And uh, 
that grapevine was the licking branch and that grapevine came down a few years ago with a windstorm, a tree came down and brought the grapevine with it. And it's kind of funny because since then, you know, I've tried to, you know, do some mock scrapes in there and uh, try to get that open back up and they don't use it anymore. So it's kind of interesting that, you know, that, that area is still a travel corridor, but it's not the community meeting place like it used to be. I mean, that was the biggest scrape yeah. I'd ever seen. Was it the way that it kinda, was before, but kind of seemed like when that one died off, that one up in the middle meadow there kind of started. Yeah, you know that's that's true. Where, so where Jimmy's camera is is on a scrape right in the. We call it the middle meadow. We've got our kind of benches on our property, and on the middle bench we've got three or four food plots that over the years Dad and Uncle Mike and and Jimmy and I'll say myself, but I didn't really do much of anything <sighs> other than uh, throw rocks at trees and and. Uh, whatnot but that uh, middle meadow is kind of right in the middle of the property and that seems to be a seems to be a hub now that is a spot for the does come to feed and there's bedding around it so there's a lot of activity around that area so very interesting and it's it's really fun having these cell phone cameras to be able to to see what's going on live up to the minute we can kind of make decisions about what we're doing based off what we're seeing so it is it is pretty interesting yep I'll tell you what, so, that, I was using, I, you probably saw the pictures that I put on our story, um, the blood trail, but I have not freaking laid a deer open like that in a long time. That was unbelievable. That was a hell of a blood trail. I mean, it's what were you, just, what are you using for, bro- that was not, that, what was that broadhead you were using? It was a dead ringer. Okay. I didn't know you had any of them. Yeah, I used the... Uh, they got real big ones I used last year, and I had a package of the smaller ones. I think they're like an inch and three quarters or two inch cut. Um, the other ones were like two and a half or something. But these ones were just sitting around the house. I, had, you know, 100 grains. They matched up to what I've been shooting, so I slapped them in, and um, it's all about where you hit them, I guess, because that freaking blew that deer apart. <laughs> Was she quartering away? Yeah, hard quartering. I so you were able to just stuck it cage and right off the chest. Nice. And she was just blowing blood. It was crazy. That's got to feel good. I know you've had a couple, a couple rough archery kills, and uh, yeah, of I late, mean, so. she was a, she was a foot off the ground and then pinballing off trees and just flipping around. It was unbelievable. Yeah, she was dead oh. from the second I shot her. I mean, she was just running dead. It was nuts. Yeah. But good stuff. So what's your plan for the weekend? Well, now that I got a doe on the ground, I am going to get done with work tomorrow and wrap things up and feed the dogs and get up to camp a reasonable hour. Normally, with the time change the way it is, I try to hunt Friday nights before I go to camp because i got to stay home and take care of the dogs um, Friday nights. But I figured since I already got a deer on the ground this week, I'll um, finish the week out and get up to camp a reasonable hour. And then uh, I probably won't get out for an evening hunt, but I'll hunt all weekend up at camp. I was talking to Greg, too. I might go back over to the farm with him Sunday afternoon for a hunt. We don't get to hunt together much, so we thought it would be fun to get out and do a little hunt together. So might be going back over to the farm there on uh, Sunday afternoon. Nice. Yeah. Do you have you the gonna, are you, camera? Yeah, I do. You want me to bring it back? Yeah, because... I would have probably videoed that buck instead of shooting that doe last night if I had a good video camera. Yeah, and we'd still be tied 1-1. One, one. See, you're lucky well, you didn't have the camera. I lied. I probably would have videoed the buck and then videoed shooting the doe because that was a freaking Yeah, video. right. But, yeah, it, uh, if you could bring that back, I'd like to screw it up a little bit. Are you going to gonna go after bear this weekend? I might. If you, Adam's if got you the can. property that we got permission on. Um and he was up there scouting at Monday, and he said there was some fresh piles of scat up there. So um, it's all cornfield and ridgeline, top of the hill, um, kind of neighboring the back of what we have permission to hunt already. So um, right. thinking about going up there for a Saturday afternoon hunt with him, yeah. seeing what's running around up there. Hopefully the corn's still up because it seems like with the corn up there, they're running the edge of the field a lot. So Yeah. Maybe just get up right, an observation set, so. Yeah, see what you see. What What are your plans? 
Uh, I'm going to head down to camp tomorrow night after work and, and uh, spend the night and hunt Saturday. I'll just hunt Saturday and then go home Saturday night. So I see if probably get up in the tree and stay up in the tree all day Saturday. I think Saturday should well, be pretty going... good after, after this weather comes through. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to make a pulled venison tomorrow, so we'll have dinner for tomorrow night. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. We'll drink some bush, tell some stories, bush. eat some venison. Braiding them. Braiding them. All right. Talk to you later. See you. See ya. On the Pertnier Hotline, we've got the one and only Nate Kennedy. Uh, Nate is one of the original Pertnier Pro staffers. Purchased some stickers right off the bat, so we appreciate his support. But Nate is a Central New Yorker, and uh, getting him on the line here to kind of give us an update what he's seeing uh, in the areas that he's hunting and uh, and what he's expecting for the weekend. So thanks for joining us, Nate. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So where where have you been hunting? What what region are you uh, have you been focusing your time the last few weeks? Well. I'm from the North Country, so I started my season up there, and then um, mid-October I hunted a lot down in the Cooperstown area, central New York, um, and then lately, since the rifle season opened up, I've been back up north. We've got a camp up in the northwestern Adirondacks. Nice. Well, so, and I'm glad to have, uh, we've been talking with a lot of folks from the western New York area and a lot of ag land, so what, what has the activity been like um, up in the North Country so far this year? Well, the racks are certainly not as big as it seems, checking you guys out lately, um, but pretty good. We've had, um, the weather's been great. I mean, the cold cold October was, was awesome to us. Last year, October, seemed like it was, you know, 75 degrees and pouring rain every day, um, and we had, I had, you know, I shot a small buck, my first bow buck right off the bat opening morning, and it was like, you know, cool, and deer were moving at 8.30. It was like it was later in the season, you know, so it's been nice. We've had had cool weather and um, really been enjoying it. Deer seem to be moving pretty good as far as I've heard and as far as I've seen. Yeah. Um, so you were up there for the uh, rifle opener this past weekend, correct? Yep, I was. So what were they, what, I mean, what are you, what are you hunting up there? Is it, is it a lot of like dark timber? Is it, uh, is there much, what type of food are they keying in on? Did you, did you see anything this past weekend? We do hunt a lot of timber. It's big woods. We've got, um, you know, quite the acreage of it's all big woods a lot of swamps and and um you know swamp edges so not not many places right now up there that you can really see quite a ways so you know you really kind of got to dive in and um we are hunting a lot of big big timber stands um but the deer are moving we're seeing um does and some small bucks moving right together mid-morning um i i saw a few does last weekend saturday morning like 9 a.m you know so that's good enough for me this time of year yeah Absolutely. Now, are you able to get doe tags up there? Is that something that you can get? It's kind of tricky. So we, we're we in uh, one region, uh, and then, like, the the region that we can get doe tags for is, like, it's, like, out the end of the camp road and, and a couple uh, roads over. So it's, like, we have to hunt, you know, we hunt bucks at camp, and then if we want to do a doe hunt sometime, we kind of have to go do that separately. So it adds a little bit of a interesting huh you know, interesting aspect to the season every year, trying to have to, you know, pick a Saturday afternoon to when are we going to doe hunt versus when are we going to buck hunt, that kind of thing. Yeah, that is interesting. I was, I never really thought about that, but just talking with you, I, I'm like, I wonder if they can get, I mean, we can get doe tags like they're going out of style down here. And, uh, right. you know, we got another another round of tags coming out tomorrow on the 1st of November. We'll be able to get more. So it's like, uh, yeah, be- it's like totally different. Yeah, there's not a lot of doe tags up there. Uh, in years past, they've issued them, and we do get them for, like I said, the kind of like the neighboring region. Um, and we, we'll go out and, and do a drive here and there and, and get a doe, and always happy to do it for sure. But um, it does kind of – it is a little weird because you just can't – can't doe hunt while you're buck hunting, you know what I mean? It's kind of a it's kind of a different thing. Yeah, absolutely. So have you uh, – what's your plans for this upcoming weekend? Are you be hunting up there again? Absolutely. Yep. I'll be heading to camp um, after work tomorrow and trying to get as many hours in the woods as possible. This really up there, it's like October, you know, October comes to an end, November starts, and it's real gradual up through the beginning of November as far as deer movement, people getting bucks. Um, but people are seeing them. 
you know, we usually get a nice buck out of our camp every year. It's not usually me that shoots it, but um, somebody usually shoots a nice one mid-November. So this time of year, we're just trying to be get it, getting out, getting as many hours in as possible. I'm going to try to hunt all day on Saturday, try to avoid the urge to go back for lunch and coffee and all that jazz. Right. Um, are you guys supposed to get snow? Because I see that the the uh, wind is going to be coming. It's going to be pretty cold down here, and I'd have to imagine it's be five or ten degrees colder up there, and the wind looks like it's going to be ideal for creating some lake effect. I'm praying for it. I mean, we it keeps switching back and forth between maybe it's going to snow Friday night, maybe it's going to snow Sunday. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't pour rain all weekend, but um, it'd be nice. A lot of times it's kind of unexpected. You know, it doesn't really call for snow, but you wake up in the morning and you got an inch or so. Um, it could happen. If it, if it does, it looks like it's going to come Sunday. Um, luckily, I'll be able to hunt all day Sunday as well, so... That'd be, nice. that'd be ideal. Up there, it's the, the leaves are so thick and the woods are so thick that really it takes that first snow to really kind of knock a lot of the leaves off and, and really get places where you can hunt up there where you can see more than a few feet, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, during the rut, are you, are you so coming up here on this, you know, this weekend and moving forward, are you sitting or are you kind of doing still hunting? What are you guys and, and everybody in your camp, how do you guys approach this up in the, up in the Adirondacks? We do more sitting these days. Um, my, my dad, my grandfather always kind of grew up, you know, walking through the woods and still hunt and sit and still hunt and sit. Um, and that worked out for them. But nowadays we, we traditionally as a family will hunt the morning hunt. Um, we'll kind of maybe do something communal in the middle of the day. Like I said, go out and try to fill a doe tag or, um, you know, do a drive or a push, we call it. But um, not, now we're pretty much sitting. And like I said, I'm, getting to the point now where I'm getting a little bit better at putting in longer hours. So I'm, uh, my plan for this weekend will definitely be to go and try to sit all day. Um, maybe sit the better half of the day and then move a little ways and, and, and stay. But, you know, until that middle of November, the, the quote unquote rut really doesn't usually kick in fully. Um, even Thanksgiving week usually is better up in the Northwoods. So, you know, we're, I'm trying to catch something early, so I will be probably trying to sit all day. Yeah. That's interesting. And it- you know, I wonder if it's got anything to do with with your rut maybe happening a little bit later, being that those does need to hold on to those fawns for a couple more weeks longer than us down here because of the sort of snowpack you will have on and up in the mountains. I, I've never really thought about that and never really discussed it, but I wonder if that has a factor in maybe you seeing the rut a week or two later than we do down here. Certainly could. I mean, the food is scarce. You know, they'll eat just about anything but they don't have anything big. You know, early season up there, right bordering us, there's some old farmland um, that's kind of been reforested onto state land, and there are some apple trees in there. So in September, they're, you know, they're happy as can be, but all throughout this deer season, there's they're just eating, you know, whatever they can find. There's no ag or real food sources. We don't have a lot of mass crop or anything like that. So, um, you know, there's not a lot of food. There's a lot of coyotes, and, yeah, the winters are pretty harsh. Last year we were up there in March, and there was, you know, a good four foot of snow. So, um you know, probably that has something to do with it. Usually early November, we get all excited. We think that it's the rot. You know, we think it's here, and then it doesn't really kick in until until a little bit later in the month. So I'm trying to be patient, but it's tough. <laughs> yeah, be patient, right? No doubt. Well, that's exciting. It sounds like you guys have got a, I've, you know, I've read some of your articles. You do quite a bit of work writing stuff, and I've enjoyed reading. Uh, you had a piece you put out last week about tradition and, you know, how this time of year, Everybody gets so excited about wherever it is that they're heading because it's typically got some kind of tradition behind it. So um, definitely enjoy keeping up with you and watching what you're doing. And uh, sounds like you guys have a pretty good, pretty good thing going up there with your family. So yeah, we're certainly fortunate to have it. And I, I and I back at you. You know, I, I've been listening to you guys' podcast and you know, family deer camp. It's it's pretty hard to beat. All my buddies right now are you know they're at Letchworth and they're all you know they're they're down in the Finger Lakes and they're they're hunting big bucks and out on public land and it's like there's just something that draws me to go to camp you know it's hard to it's hard to get away even the duck hunting it's just you know everybody's all my friends are big time duck hunters and they have a blast and they do really well and it's like ah you know i just i just got to go to camp even though the the deer (laughs) might be smaller and harder to find but it's you know there's just something about that tradition and that aspect of it that really kind of has the pull for me so that's where i'll be awesome well, good luck to you this weekend, and uh, we'll be watching to see if you can uh, put the hammer down on one, and we'll be uh, talking to you soon. Hey, fingers crossed, man. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, buddy. See ya. Later.
Joining us on the Breeding Them Hotline is uh, Jamie Mann. He is the he's one of the co-founders of Hunters Creek Outdoors. Uh, they, they've been together for many years now, and uh, many of you may follow them on Facebook and Instagram. They put a lot of good content out throughout the year uh, with both with pretty much anything outdoors, whether it's fishing, hunting, turkey hunting, deer hunting, you name it. Uh, they're always putting up stuff that they're doing, and uh, they're constantly busy in the outdoors. So uh, Jamie, and uh, he's good friends with Scott that was on last week, and Jamie was fortunate to, uh, to arrow a beautiful buck last Saturday night, uh, which would have been the 26th of October. So I wanted to get Jamie on to uh, tell his story and share share how it all happened and uh, you know what he thinks were the pieces that made that whole puzzle come together. So, Jamie, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem. So, yeah, give us the, give us a rundown. How did it all happen? Well, I, I mean, to be honest with you, um, I was hunting, it would have been the last Thursday morning, and I was when I was walking out of the woods, I decided to, um, you know, check some cameras, obviously, and I could see my mock scrape. Um, my one mock scrape was tore up pretty good, so... Needless to say, I was pretty excited, you know, to get the SD card back home. And when I got it back home, you know, what it told me, between the 21st and the 22nd, I had three, you know, shooter bucks on camera that had hit that scrape. And one of them was daylight, um, 4.30 in the afternoon. And it was an eight-pointer, you know, nice wide eight-pointer, beautiful deer. A deer that uh, we've had a little history with after studying the pictures a little while, I could see that it was an eight pointer that, um, you know, we had, uh, basically two years worth of pictures of them. And it was kind of unique in a way because last year, when I went back through the pictures last year, he first showed up on this exact same scrape on November 13th. So, you know, this week or this year, he's, you know, he's 10, 12, you know, two weeks early, really, but, um, pretty cool to see because, you know, after he first showed up last year, I got probably a hundred pictures of him, you know, throughout the rest of the season. So, you know, he was a homebody and he was close. So, you know, make a long story short, I was, you know, pretty excited, you know, to get back out there, especially during daylight. So now, you know, now it's basically just kind of waiting for the right wind and, and, uh, you know, being able to get in there and hunt that max scrape. And that's exactly what happened Saturday night. We, it, the wind was marginal. I'll, I'll say that, but, good enough that we could hunt that scrape. So I was pretty happy to get in there. All right. So what, so what does that setup look like? Are you in farmland? Is that right out in our area where we live in Wyoming or in, you're in Erie County probably, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm in Erie County. Just, I mean, pretty close to the Wyoming County line. Um, but okay. it's, uh, it, you know, the setup, it's a little, it's a little food plot that actually me and Scott, um, you know, put in, um, probably the last week of July, beginning of beginning of August, and you know the property itself. It's it's a smaller property, but it has a lot of good bedding. And and you know the way you try to set it up. I mean, obviously you can't do it every time, but it, the way you try to set it up is if you can get you know the food close to that bedding where they have to kind of you know, transition into it. That's exactly what this spot is. I mean majority of my property here is, is a is a big piece of bedding and, and the stands kinda of right in between that bedding and that food and the scrape is right there. Now the scrape's been there. I started this mock scrape probably gotta be five, six years ago and now it's it's hard to even really call it a mock anymore because you know, the deer are used to it and they just keep coming and coming and coming. So yeah. So it's it's kind really of a nice little setup. Sounds like kind of a community scrape you've almost created a community scrape, scrape it sounds like. Exactly. That's, that's exactly it. I mean, nice. I probably if I had so, to count up, you know, you probably get 10, 12 bucks a year on it. So that's, all, that's, that's a good active scrape, man. Yeah. Pretty exciting. So fast forward to Saturday. So you decide you're going to, you're going to get out there. You've got a wind close to what you want in order to get in there and not disturb the bedding area too much from what it sounds like. So, you uh you had it in Saturday and then you know what unfolded from there. Yeah, Saturday Saturday night was a great night. Um, started off pretty slow. When I say the wind was marginal because it was it was supposed to be east southeast and it was blowing east southeast. You know, and the scrape is going to be if I'm in the tree stand, the scrape is directly south of me. So the east southeast, the east isn't good, but the southeast would be fine. 
it swirled around a little bit a few times. And to be honest with you, I was nervous. I was going to get down because I was like, man, you know, I can't have the wind blowing right at the straight. So um, we had texted, you know, I was texting, obviously, Scott and, you know, Paul and Ryan, the other co-founders, and, you know, thinking, you know, maybe I should get down. But at that, you know, right when I was going to make that decision, the wind blew straight out of the south, and, I was, and it was absolutely perfect. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to stay here, and it is what it is. Now, this buck was the only buck that I see. It was the only deer that I saw that night, and not really surprising because my wind is kind of blowing out into the plot. So, but the way, I guess, why I did what I did was when he was on camera, he came in from the south, so I said if he comes in from the same direction, I got him. And sure enough, it was probably right around 6 o'clock, maybe 5 to 6 or so, um, and, and and just to give a little kind of a, there there's there's trails you know you know like a pool of the trail or you know just a walking trail that come into that scrape, and I can't really see anything. So, you know, I said he's going to be you know if he comes up that trail out of that out of the brush out of that bedding, like he's going to be at the scrape. That's the first time I'm going to see him. You know, so I'm going to have to really be ready. You know, and like you said, being an amateur you know video production group, you know I had my camera. So I had my camera already set up to just basically shoot at the scrape. And to be honest, I got really lucky. He must have broke a branch or he, he, he broke something because I said, I mean, man, it sounds like a deer. And I turned the camera on, you know, and the next time I looked up, all I saw was his rack coming around the corner. And he, he just literally marches right up into the scrape and he starts, you know, working the scrape, you know, hitting his rack and the branches. And, you know, I was like, oh, my goodness, you know. <laughs> what a show, you know, it instantly gets the old heart, you know, heart pumping. Oh, yeah. I, as soon as I seen him come around the corner and saw his mainframe, eight, I was like, oh, my God, it's him, you know. <laughs> Here's the deer that I'm after, and here he is standing 25 yards in front of me working the scrape, and he has no clue that I'm there. You know, I was fortunate. It, it, everything played out good. You know, I drew my bow back. You know, I, I just kind of looked at the camera one more time, and it was perfect. And, you know, I put it right on his front shoulders and, uh, you know, I ended up shooting him right through the heart, so it was a it was a good night. <laughs> I'll say that it ended well. Yeah, it's got to feel awesome to have a plan and have it come together. And um, very excited to I uh, was excited to get that text from Scott. He texted me Saturday night and said my buddy shot a good one. And then to see it was you getting that one it was uh, very excited to hear that and uh, to see it was a it was a very good buck. So if anybody wants to see pictures of it, uh, they've definitely they got a bunch of pictures up on there. Facebook and Instagram page of it, so I encourage you to check that out. But um, what what I find I'm having a lot of these conversations and the consistent the consistent success, the people that are having success, the consistency is that they're right, very close to betting and food in between the two is where everybody is seeing and having good success uh, right now. So kind of cool to hear that from you too that you are you're pretty much right outside the betting at that scrape near food and that's you know the first time you saw him was at your scrape i would assume coming out of betting right exactly he was i mean i mean obviously never know 100 percent sure but but the way he came in on the pictures is the exact same way he came in tonight and he's coming right out of the betting area and so you know I, I guess the food plot is huge and it's it's not a big plot it's a smaller plot but if it keeps the does there all year round, you know, so many guys say, you know, I'm not getting any pictures of bucks. All I got are does and does and does. And I said, well, be patient because that's awesome. <laughs> because if you got the does, yeah. you're going to have the bucks this time of year. So and that's exactly what it is. He, sure. He was coming yeah, to check that straight to check the does. It doesn't matter where those bucks are all July and August because they're not going to be most likely where they, you're seeing them then. You're not going to be there come November. So it's, uh, exactly. Yeah, it, we're the, we're exactly the same. We have a, a camp in Naples, and all of our food plots, we get tons and tons of doe activity 12 months out of the year, but we don't really see a whole lot of bucks until the middle of October through November. And the bucks are nearby, but they're not living there. And it doesn't really matter because all we want is for them to be there when we need them to be there. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly it. And it that's kind of how you know, my property works basically the same way. You know, like I said before, it's a smaller piece, and I got, I, I'm fortunate enough I'm in a good situation where I got some really, really good neighbors that have some bigger pieces of property, and, you know, we all work together and share information, and, and it works out really well. I typically don't start getting good pictures until, 
you know, right around October 20th. And, and sure enough, that's exactly what happened. The first really good buck that I got on camera, you know, when I pulled that card was October 17th. So, you know, right on cue, just like every other year, yep. get the does and the bucks will be there sometime. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, I appreciate appreciate your time. Congratulations. And uh, I'll make sure when I post up the, the podcast tomorrow on November 1st, I'll put a picture of your buck up there if you don't mind to share with everybody. Oh, not at all, man. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jamie. And uh, I'm sure we'll uh, look forward to meeting you one of these days. We're not too far from each other. And Scott, Scott just glows about you every morning at the gym. So I have to, <laughs> have to get together and have a beer one of these days. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Take it easy, buddy. All right, take care. Bye. See ya. Joining us now on the Breedenham Hotline, Connor <laughs> Holly. This is his second appearance on Breedenham Radio, and uh, <laughs> Connor was all fired up about last weekend, and he went out and got into some action. So, Connor, what's up? And uh, give us a story. <clears throat> yeah, so it was... Um so this would have been last Saturday morning. So um, got up into my stand about 6:30. Uh, sun came up, and just right at 7:30, there's uh, you know s- some action off to the right side of me. There's a little um, hedgerow. It's probably you know 20 yards thick, and there's uh, two fields on either side. And a little a little four point came came busting out of it, and uh, he was he was kind of all nervous and, and scared and kind of running. And behind him came out a really nice um, six point, and uh, you know it's it's just it never ceases to amaze me how you, know, you can go from just dead quiet to ten seconds later, you know your heart's racing a hundred miles per hour, and you you know you have your bow drawn. Um, so so yeah, so the the six point came just right in, uh, right in in front of my stand, probably a, a twenty yard shot. Um, you know I pulled pulled my bow, drew and uh, let, uh, let the arrow fly. Um, so, yeah, this would be, so I've been, been bow hunting now for, gosh, this is like my fifth year, and I was just ecstatic. You know, I thought I had made a really good shot, um, you know, just the arrow went flying, and boom, you know, a big thud, and, you know, I, the deer, you know, ran off, and I kept an eye on him. He just ran right down the middle of this field, so I had a pretty good eye on him. Probably ran, you know, maybe a, maybe. 80 to 100 yards until he got kind of over this hill, and I, I couldn't see him anymore, but I was just, you know, ecstatic. I think, you know, you may have been the first person I texted just, um, you know, kind of let you know what happened. And I was just finally, you know, after you know, hundreds of hours of sitting in a tree stand and um, just, you know, passing on smaller bucks, I was like, this is finally finally the deer. It finally happened. And, um, yeah, so... So I, I just sat in my stand and just and just waited. I just wanted to, just to give it a, a good, you know, good hour. So I just wanted to just let it, you know, let the deer sort of expire and just give it some good time. And uh, one of the things that you had asked me, and I didn't even think about, you know, when, when I spoke to you on the phone not too long after was, you know, what did it sound like? You know, was there, and I was like, oh, it's like a big thud, which I assumed was a good thing at that time. And, you know, I, I said that, and you, were, you kind of hesitated and was like, oh, uh oh, yeah, it sounds like maybe you hit him in the in the shoulder, and I was like, oh shoot, you know, I think you're right, because if it's a if you have a good you know you know lung shot or heart, it's just gonna pass through, and you probably won't hear much noise at all. So I was like, oh shoot, so that was kind of the the start of you know my my worries. Um, but anyways, you know, so I, hour passes, I get out of my stand, go start to try to find you know a blood trail or go try to find the arrow, uh, and I just I can't find anything you know i'm um i'm having trouble just doing doing finding just just any sort of sign whatsoever um so i pull up my onyx map and i start my tracking you know just kind of just i cause in my mind i'm like i'm gonna walk out into this field the deer's gonna be laying there dead 100 yards out we're gonna you know gut it bring it to you know bring it to um bring it to be processed and there it is that's you know that's the end of that's the end of my day and what I thought was going to be pretty quick and pretty easy turned into four hours of tracking and four miles of area being covered. Um, the the field that the property that I'm hunting is about 75 acres, and I I I looked over every as much of it as I possibly could. I never found an arrow. I never found any blood. Um, so I, I'm thinking that it was a shoulder shot. Probably spit the arrow out somewhere. 
and um, and yeah, it was just super super disheartening. I, I just I just didn't even want to like hunt anymore <laughs> after after that yeah. happened. Um, it was just yeah, it just it sucked. It, it sucked hard. Yeah. But yeah. um, it's, but yeah, it, or go ahead. No, you go. Whatever you're okay. going to say is well, more important was, than what I was going to say. No, no, I mean, because one of the things, I, I think I did see the deer. Um, you know, initially when I first started walking out into the field, um, it makes sense it was the deer. It was a six-point. It, it didn't have an arrow in it anymore. Um, but I, I got out to where I thought it was really going to be, and I, I did bump uh, a deer. And at that time, I was like, yeah, there's no way that's the deer. It didn't have an arrow in it. And I went and, go ch- I went and checked the bed it was laying in, and there was no blood at all. So I was like, nah, that can't be it. That's probably... Because there were two six points that were kind of made it up that were just sort of, you know, running around the property together. I was like, oh, that, that must just be his buddy. Um, that must just be the other six point that I've been seeing. But now the more I think about it, it just it makes sense that that's probably the deer, which I guess, you know, makes me feel a little bit better. I mean, the very last thing I ever want to do is just, you know, put a bad shot on a deer. I think that's why, I mean, that's not, I think, that's, that's definitely why I felt so bad um, was just, I was mad at myself. I, I rushed, I rushed the process. I didn't, I didn't go through my steps. I didn't level my bubble. I didn't pick a spot. Uh, I just, I, I rushed the entire process. And I think that's, or I know that's why I was just so upset with myself. The last thing I ever want to do is, you know, injure one of these deer and just have it suffer for the rest of the season or, you know, go slowly die somewhere. Or if there's a lot of coyotes around there, I don't want to get eaten by coyotes. That's not a fun way to go. So it's just, yeah, uh, yeah I was just pretty upset with myself. Yeah, and that's part of hunting. I mean, you, you, you and I, we kind of stayed texting back and forth, and I called you a couple times because I was anxious to find out what happened. And um, yeah, you know, you had texted me when you had kind of thrown in the red flag and or whatever color flag, the white one, I guess it'd be. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and you're like, "Has this ever happened to you?" And I told you, I'm like, "This has happened," and if you hunt, this is going to happen. Um, right. And it sucks. It sucks to have it happen on you know, one of the best opportunities you ever had with your bow and to get your right, first deer right. on the ground, it sucks, but it's, it's hunting and things can happen and you got to keep your head up and don't get discouraged by it because you got to learn from it. And I think, yeah, you know, yeah. was it, was that the same deer could be, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was. And right. You, right. you, you may never, you may never know. Um, but you know, one of the things that, you know, came to my mind, you know, talking with you is, you know, you hear so much, like there's so much content out there about, you know, what to do and how to get yourself in the situation to kill the deer. But then, you know, there's not a whole lot of coaching or teaching or talking about, you know, what do you do once you, once you've made that shot, where do you start, you know, and tracking is, is an art and there's a lot of different ways to do it and everybody might have their own opinions, but, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be around it my whole life. So you, and you, I've seen all the, there's, Tons of stuff you haven't seen, but you every track job you go on, you learn something. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, one of the big things I, you know, the first thing I asked Connor when he called was, you know, what did the shot sound like, like he said. And it, because that, you know, if you hit one and it passes through and you see the arrow sitting there, there's not a whole lot of thinking that needs to go on. But if you hit that deer right. and it takes off running, you know, what did it sound like? How was the deer running? Was it running wide open? Was it just bounding and bouncing like it doesn't know what was going on. You know, all those right. things are factors yeah. to take into mind, you know. Yeah. Yep. And those, those so are things, like, as, as you were asking them, I was like, oh, God, those are really good questions. I didn't, you know, because you know, when I thought I hit it, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, shit, deer down, this is going to be great. But I just started asking those questions. I was like, oh, yeah, it was a big thud. No, that sounds like a shoulder <laughs> shot. How was he running? Oh, he was like full-on sprint like nothing happened, you know, 100 yards. And it's like, oh, that's not, I was like, man, that maybe that isn't such a good sign. So, yeah, again, these are just yeah. things that I just, I learn as I, as I go along. Yep. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, the, the one thing, you know, I, I, I'm trying to take away from this is just to really use it as a learning opportunity. When, when I get into that situation, which I hope is tomorrow when I'm out hunting, just to really try and, and control those nerves, to really go through my process, you know, lock that thumb on my, on my chin, level my bubble, pick a spot, that's the spot I want to hit, you know, as, as I keep replaying in my mind, which I think I've done about a hundred times since it happened every single day. I just, there was, there was no thought process there. It was really just, I drew the bow. I looked at my peep and I just, you know, let it fly. And it's like, dude, you didn't, I, I didn't follow my process. So 
and, and I think you know, you had a really good point. Um, you know, to to you know, try and take some dose. You know, re- the more I can, you know, really try and you know, practice on on some other deer. Just that just prepares me more for that eight point, ten point, that one in a lifetime shot. Because I don't I don't want to be fumbling and not going, you know, not having going through my process when when it really really does count. And there's a deer that I really want to take. Right. Exactly. And so, and. I- it's really funny because when it comes to getting excited when there's a deer coming in, you know, I get just excited with a doe. It doesn't matter whether it's a no, hawk right, yeah. or if it's a doe. Like, if, you're, if your mind, if you're in that mindset that you're going to try to harvest that animal, the, then things get going. You start getting typewriter leg with your, you know, you're freaking sh- you know, chattering and shaking. And, like, that's, that's an awesome feeling. And it's so funny how when you leave that bow on the bow hook and you're just sitting there with your binoculars, it's like, yeah, there's a nice deer there, but I, you know, I'm not going to try to kill it. So there's right. no, there's no nerves. So you got to put yourself yeah. in that situation. And, and I'm not sitting here saying that I, I'm great with that. Like I freak out right. and I, that's why we all do it. I think because you just get that level of adrenaline and excitement that you just can't recreate with anything. I, yeah, it's, it's awesome. So you got to put yourself in those scenarios and you got to, you know, you're going to make mistakes and it's okay. You just don't want to, yeah. you know, obviously, like you said, you don't want to wound an animal. Um, right. But it sounds like you're that deer that, you know, he's okay. And I'll bet you if you go out there, especially once the grass and the goldenrod dies off, you'll probably find that arrow. And, um, yeah. you know, it'll probably explain more of the story about what exactly happened there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so yeah, you know, it's, um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to get getting. I just got to get back on the horse. I got to get out there this weekend and you know look for some look for some redemption. Yep. Are you going back to the same area? Yeah, I am. I'm going to go back to the same okay. area. I've just seen a lot of seen a lot of really nice deer out there. Well, good luck to you and uh, Thank you, keep Bill. your head up. Just keep throwing carbon downfield and uh, and something good will happen. Yeah. No, for sure. I hope to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hold off on the exciting text so I, until I know the uh-huh. deer's down this time. So next next time you receive a text from me, hopefully on like a Friday or Saturday morning, it'll be it'll be a, a picture of a deer that's already down. Uh, you just you just tell me I hit one and we'll <laughs> put, we'll put the old bloodhound on it. <laughs> Sounds like a plan, buddy. I want I wanted in the worst way to come help you track that thing, and you were just you were you didn't want me there. No, I, I, I didn't want to ruin your hunt. I, I've, I have a very big issue of, of asking people for help. I know you were heading down to camp and stuff like that. I didn't want you to. I, I think I, I, in the back of my mind, I think I, I knew what was happening. I was like, I, I, I just kind of knew that <laughs> there's no way we're finding this freaking deer. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, if, if, there was, if there was blood and, you know, if, if there was, like, you know, tallow on my, on, on my arrow and I knew that it was going to be a, a hell of a track job, but because I hadn't even found an arrow or a drop of blood, I was like, "Oh man, this thing's this thing's fine, and it's it's long gone from here." So I, I think in the back of my mind, I knew. But at the end of the day, I I, you know, I knew I was like, "Listen, I'm I'm going to do this this deer the best respect I can. I'm going to look as hard and as as long as I can." Um, but I think in the back of my mind, I I knew how it was going to end up. So I didn't want to didn't want to impede on your hunting day. Okay. Well, don't you ever worry about that. I almost get more enjoyment yeah. out of tracking one than I do actually trying to kill one. More fun because you know that <laughs> the hard part's already done. Now you just got to find it. Now you just got to find the freaking thing. But yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I was gonna say one thing before. I, I this was this was kind of um, nice. Now I was watching a new season of, of Meat Eater because you're right with social media. Whether you're on, you know you you go onto any of these professional hunters' websites and man, you know they're they're taking these sweet animals. It seems like they never screw up, and so. You know, when, when I, you know, when you, when you do hit a deer and you don't find it, you know, you just don't really see that side of the story with Cam Haynes or, you know, Steve Rinella or I, I even really follow, you know, um, you know, Bo Martonic very often. Um, but you don't really see that other side of the story where it's not always, you know, rainbows and sunshine and, you know, you hit the deer perfect and it drops 20 yards away. Um, but um, I, I did see in, in Rinella's new uh, season, he does put a bad shot on an elk, which is kind of, it was, honestly, it was it was um, it was kind of you know, and I guess it was kind of a breath of fresh air because it wasn't his perfect shot, and the deer and the animal died you know twenty yards away, and you know it all went perfectly. You know he he put a bad shot with a bow on on an elk, and you know 
it was, it wasn't, it was actually another hunter it was actually one, the one that found it. So they probably never would have even found the animal if it wasn't for somebody else finding it. But you know, you only see the good side of hunting. You don't always see the, you know, the, the real side of it. Yep. And it's, I, I guess it's a, it is really nice to see the, the real side of that. Um, and yeah. I think a lot of the reasons why you don't see the, the negatives the you know, the, the, the wounds or the misses or hear those stories is that, you know, there's so many people that are against hunting and those are the things yeah. that they grasp onto and say, Oh, well, you're making this animal suffer. And you know, everybody right, who right. hunts understands that that's part of it, but it's, True. it is super yeah. encouraging to start seeing and hearing some of those stories because it, it, it makes you feel like you're not alone in the fact that it's not the easiest thing. You just walk out in the woods and you sit there for 10 minutes and you shoot something like that's yeah. the perception you know, a lot of people have. For sure. And, you know, I, I think, yeah, I, I, I believe that, you know, hunting is sort of making a comeback, um, you know, because of social media and because of people like Cam Haynes and Stephen Ranella. You know, it's not, it's not your typical, you know, it, you, I think, you know, 10 years ago you'd turn on a hunting show and it's a bunch of, you know, you know just, you know, uneducated people sitting in trees just shooting animals. You know, when you, when you have <laughs> Cam Haynes and Stephen Ranella who are, you know, who are eloquent and who are fit and just, it, it's, I think that's, that's kind of, pushed people into the sport and so it, it's good to see that because if if you're coming into it and you're like oh man like i i you know i want to i'm like Cam, i want to be like cam haynes i'm gonna go pick up a bow and go shoot an animal you know they they need to know the entire experience and what can happen not just yet yeah, like you said not just gonna you know pick up a bow shoot a couple of arrows and walk into the woods and, and take an animal it's not it's not that easy so yeah seeing that other side of it i think is important but also you're right you know the public perception of hunting hasn't always isn't isn't the greatest so you do want to protect that a little bit as well so but i think it's funny that that fine that fine balance but yep it is it's, it's just it's telling the story and communicating it properly i mean you just yeah, got to make right. sure that it's not thrown in people's faces it's like well here's what happened this is the reality of it and right. you know i walked i walked four miles on a 70 acre piece which is not a huge piece of property you covered every inch of that looking for your arrow for blood for hair for anything you could find and you so you spent the time yeah. and, and that animal's fine Absolutely. you know he's he's right. not he is not laying somewhere and no yeah i i checked i checked everyone if if you want a snapshot of that uh, I, I think i sent you a picture of that oh my gosh i think i i covered every square inch of that one field they ran off into and then i covered up you know a whole bunch of others but yeah you know, at the end of the day that's the very last thing i want to have happen very last thing yeah. Absolutely. All right, buddy. I'll let you go. Um, great chatting with you, and keep your head up. Yes, sir. Good luck this weekend. Hey, I was going to ask you, is, did you post that? Is that is that 10 point on the Naples property? I wasn't sure who, who threw that up there. Yes, sir. The monster. Yeah, he's a giant. That's a, that's a, that's a good-looking deer. Yep, biggest deer we've ever had on camera, ever. And we've oh had cameras gosh. up. You know, we've been running cameras for 15 years, so we're it's all pretty a, jacked up about it. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. Jim, Jim's, uh, Jim's got his high, his hopes set on that one, huh? Yeah, but he already sold his tag, so. Oh gosh, yeah, right. He filled yeah. that a few weeks ago. Yes, well, he did. Big Jim's have to sit this one out. Yep. Just sit back Jim and relax, up. Jimbo. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, I'll uh, hopefully I'll talk to you this weekend. Yeah, sounds good. All right. See you, man. All right. See you. Thanks. Yep. Bye. All right, so on the line now, we've got Zach Eason. Uh, Zach and I were uh, college baseball teammates at uh, Finger Lakes Community College, and we've uh, gotten busy with life and went in our own directions after we got done there, and, and uh, Pertinier Outdoors has brought us back together, and uh, I'm happy about that because now we can't stop talking about all the stuff we got going on. And uh, so I'm excited to get Zach on here and have him tell us what he's seeing out there and what's going on with him. As, uh, as he's starting a little bit of a rut vacation right now, I'm going to be spending a couple weeks uh, in the field chasing around rutting whitetail. So um, welcome aboard, Josh. Josh, Jesus, Zach, I'm watching baseball and I'm half distracted. Zach, oh, welcome. Man, man. Thanks for jumping on. <laughs> no, I mean, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, so we, we kind of started chatting before we hit the record button, but... Uh, so what do you got going on? You're you're headed down uh, 
to your in-laws property to chase around some deer the next couple of weeks? So, yeah, so I'm very fortunate. Um, I have a good land down here in Livingston County. It's uh, the town of Canisius, um, quite a few hundred acres. Uh, my wife and I put a lot of time on, and I've um, I took today off. I took tomorrow off, um, and I my real vacation is going to start Monday. I'll hunt. I'll hunt two weeks down here. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what's going to happen. Nice. Have you have you been uh, have you been running a lot of trail cameras all summer? You've got some deer on uh, the on the hit list. This uh, this year I'm late. I'm not going to lie. I didn't get I didn't get cameras out to the end of August. Um, I've got seven cameras out right now. Um, I've got a mixture of daytime, a lot of daytime, but I'll, I'll, right now it's it's going pretty nocturnal. Um, I'm I'm fighting a lot of standing corn right now on the block. So it's 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 kind of tough right now. Um, you you're just trying to you're trying to catch deer from bedding to the corn, and it's 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 hard. If you get what I'm saying. Have you ever, yeah. Have you ever hunted that property with standing corn before, or no? I have. Um, bow season. The last time that we had full corn on every piece, there was lanes cut, so you could at least see a bit. Um, you could you could. It, it's not hard to find does down here i mean it's nothing that it's nothing to have uh anywhere from a 25 to 40 deer set it's a, we're, like i said we're very fortunate to have the land that we have um it's 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 the closest to the midwest i've ever hunted and i've hunted illinois you know I've, I've, I've been out there quite a few times um it's it's as closest to that as i've ever seen when it comes to deer numbers in the state of new york um you're, you're just trying you're trying hard to, to get you know, from bedding in between the bedding and in between the food, and and it's it's sometimes it's during the rut it's hard because you want to be where where the does are, um, so you're really trying to sneak in when you can. You're just trying to play the game as right as possible. Yeah. So with uh with there being as much standing corn, you know, you kind of bring into my mind what's your what's your approach? Are you are you getting out there? early before the sun comes up or are you walking through those fields or are you approaching your stand spots through the woods? How are you getting in, uh, in there in the morning or are you even hunting in the morning? So last week I had, I have a really, really good scrape line right now. I'm one, I'm one of the fields. It's probably a, uh, it's probably a 20, 25 acre field of standing corn. And this one buck, um, I believe I know what deer it is. I believe I jumped him last week walking in, um, I, I saw he, you know, I I jumped him early. You know, I was in probably 45 minutes before daylight. I, I should have been in earlier than that, but he was in there. He was doing his thing, and and when I jumped him just with the moonlight, you could kind of see, you know, his frame. And he he was a good deer, I believe. Like I said, I believe I know what buck that is. Uh, it's it's super tough to even play play that game you know you're trying to hunt scrapes you're trying to hunt where you know if bucks are trying you know trying to get to where they want to be um tonight i hunted a piece in between two heavy beddings uh where they actually go come from one bedding enter another bedding out to the corn in the last week and a half this one buck is every morning he he gets up he cuts through this one piece and he goes out to the standing corn and, and right now i'm just trying to catch him but it's a big ravine um, down here in the town of Canisius. And you, you can guess, you can have steps on top of the ravine, you can have steps on the bottom of the ravine. It's it's more or less he never uses the same route, and, and you're, just, you're just trying to play the guessing game at this point. Um, and, and there's just so many does. So it's it's been super yeah. tough. I've, I'm trying to figure that out this week. So I everything you're saying sounds very, very similar similar but you've got something you've got more does and you're more and you're not far you're maybe 10 miles from where our camp is but the terrain and the and the food available is a lot different it's all hardwoods and and hills where we are and you're in hills but the tops are a lot of the tops are all ag corn and soybeans so where i'm going with that is that there's a the buck to doe ratio is not maybe not ideal so are, do you see better your best opportunity coming like right now? So like we're recording this on the 30th of October. 
Like you see the best opportunity to get one of those target bucks in the next, you know, four or five days before you really do start getting some does into estrus and those bucks go locked down and don't have to go anywhere. I found that this this property down here is I've killed three good deer in the last three years down here. I've killed all those deer. The three bull bucks I've killed, I've killed between the 7th and 9th of November. Um, okay. All three of them. I did shoot a nice one with a gun, and that was around Thanksgiving um, three years ago. But it seems like that week that you really want to be anywhere from the 6th to, like, Veterans Day is when you really want to be in the woods down here in western New York. Um, we do have an abundance of does. We have to harvest those. We have to manage that big time. Not only are they, we have so much crop loss. My father-in-law is a farmer down here. Um, but it's it's also tough because the first week in November, do you want to put an arrow through a doe? No, you don't. Because um, you, don't, you don't know what's behind that doe. Um, what I like, my biggest thing the last couple of years I've found is that I, I, I'll push a little farther in than most people might be comfortable with. Um, I'll try to get in, you know, I'll look at, you know, hunt stand, I'll look at Onyx, and you're like, that's thick, thick bedding, that's the rippers, that's, that's down trees, that's super, super thick bedding. I'll try to get on the edge of that, but even, even penetrate that a little bit if the wind's right. And if you can, you know, I've I've rattled in bucks down here. I've grunted last year's buck, the double beam, you know, main beam deer I killed. I grunted that buck in from 100 yards out of his bed. And a lot of people might, you know, get a little queasy, if you will, entering a, 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 you know, a thick bedding cover, a piece of property that you'll never enter any other time during the year. But when it's right and the temperatures are right and and you just, you know, it's time. I, I try to do that, and that's that's what I've been trying to do the last couple of years down here. It's paid off. Nice. I, are you going in there? Are you going in there in the morning? Or are you waiting for the sun to come up and kind of slowly easing your way in there? How are you getting into those bedding areas? I've shot two bucks at night and one in the morning. Um, it's it's hard to do a hang and hunt in some thick thick cover like that. Um, last year's deer in the morning. In the morning. Yeah, in the morning. If, yeah. if you're going to do a hang and hunt in the morning, it's obviously you, you want to get in there well before sunrise. You're talking an hour or more. Um, you know, you might be banging around a little bit. It, it depends on how quiet and how comfortable you are with, with, you know, I use the lone wolf setup. I use lone wolf sticks. I use lone wolf, you know, hang on stand. Um, mm-hmm. it, in the afternoon, if you slip in at noon, 1 o'clock, you have a little more room to play with. Um, like I said, if the wind's right. So I, I, I tend to do that more in the afternoon. If I have a pre-hung stand, and, and, you know, again, if you play in the wind and, and you, you feel comfortable, then in the morning you can do that as well. But usually in the morning if I'm doing that, if I'm, if I'm going into a thicker bedding, care, you know, bedding cover or bedding area, it's, it, it's, that would be a pre-hung set. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that is a lot to to go in there first thing in the morning and try to figure all that out, especially this time of year. You um, just don't want to bust deer out of their beds if you don't no. have to, and that's that's the that's the you know that's the downfall of it. Yeah, but the the risk is worth the reward, and uh, sounds like you absolutely you've, you've lived that out absolutely. the last few years. So as we uh, you know as so this is uh, Wednesday night the thirtieth, and you're you're going to be Looking at a couple of days in the in the woods coming up here, uh, what's your approach going to be? We have a pretty nasty weather system coming through uh, tonight through to all day tomorrow and some high winds. And then Friday, it looks like it should be a little bit better, uh, much colder. Friday will say a good day. What's your, so what's your plan for tomorrow and then go heading in towards the weekend? Tomorrow, I actually have a pre-hung. I left, um, I left my... Um, my hanging hunt set up in the woods tonight. I'm going to go, the The wind's pretty decent for the morning. So I'm going to go back and hunt that. It's in between, again, it's on top of the ravine in between two really thick bedding areas. Um, to the north, like northeast is that standing corn. Um, those deer are bedded to the south. So I'm really hoping tomorrow when they edge, I've got a small hidden field in the middle between these two bedding areas. I'm really hoping I can catch a buck you know, cruising, cruising that thicket, 
just just in the inside corner of this field in the morning. Um, I'm probably only going to do it, you know, at 10 a.m. kind of sit tomorrow due to the weather. Um, me coming down here tonight was kind of last minute. Friday looks really good. I unfortunately got to go home tomorrow. I can't hunt Friday, and in the weekend I'm kind of I'm kind of stuck. So I'll be back down here Sunday night and hunt through the week. Um, I'm just going just gonna to see what the weather does, you know, and, and, and I just, like I said tonight, we were talking earlier before, um, there's a piece to the south that these deer are very comfortable with. They're always betting on. It hasn't been bow hunted in years. Um, I did believe I just picked up permission to hunt that property. Again, it's going to be something I, I might maybe midday Monday be able to really put time on and scout. Um, if I can get a set in there, that'll be great. If not, I'll just do hanging hunts or, you know, hang it and, and leave it in there. Um, I really think I could capitalize on a buck getting getting up in, you know, in his bed morning, mid-morning, and, and killing a deer on that piece. And it's it's a 50-acre piece that butts up to the 110 that I'm hunting right now. But it's, it's just where it has everything. That's awesome. And it's tomorrow's a good day to to kind of wander a little bit of that stuff with the rain we've got coming that uh, will wash away a little bit of your scent and kind of cover up any disturbance you might cover on a cold, crispy day, you know? Yep, absolutely. I mean, when it comes to, you know, especially in New York State, you know, I I found that you really got to like, you got to think outside the box. You got to we can all sit down and, and, and look at Onyx, look at Hunt Stand, and try to plan what we're going to do, and sometimes we overthink it. Um, I think a lot of times when you think outside the box and, and, and start being like, you know, I could get away with this. And, and, you know, sometimes, a lot of times you might get picked, you might get busted, but that one time that counts, you, you succeed. You get a shot, you get a shot opportunity that you never thought you would have. And that's where I think a lot of hunters, especially in, you know, in New York State, really, if, if you're serious about it and you're serious about trying to kill a good deer, sometimes think outside the box. Don't, don't you know, don't overhunt an area like we talked earlier in the week. Like, don't let a buck pattern you. And we we yeah. talk about how, trying to pattern deer and, and whatnot. I think I think a, a mature deer can pattern a hunter. And if you, I talked to this with a, one of my buddies who's um hunting a, a neighboring property a quarter mile from the farm down here and he strongly feels he hasn't seen buck movement in three weeks he hasn't seen a good a good deer in three weeks um given that you know they're changing from their summer pattern to you know this pre-rut what you know everything's changing um right but if you over hunt an area a deer will pick you the, the, they know oh, yeah. that you're in there they know the farmer they know you know the guy combining the corn they get that they see that all day long it's you, where they live <laughs> yeah i mean you, you walk a laneway differently a deer would be like that's not right you know what i mean especially mature yeah. deer in this state where we have so many hunters you know we might be able to get away with a four and a half year old on state land in ohio or illinois or iowa a four and a half year old deer in new york state is a gene it's crazy because they see so many hunters a two-year-old in the yeah. state smarter than a four-year-old out west. I, I, I fully believe that. Yep, 100%. Yeah, if you're shooting, if you're shooting three-year-olds in New York State every year, like you're doing something because oh, it's absolutely. very hard to get on. You know, two-and-a-half-year-olds are, are, can even be challenging too, but you get into yep. three-year-olds and it's like you and I got, I shared a picture. I, you know, I got a picture of that giant on camera last night and, you you know we got pictures of him last year and now he's showing up again you know my brother had we figured out which buck this is and we had pictures of him last year and uh right around the same time it was the 25th was when we had pictures of him last year but he he disappears and he's there right right at the beginning of the rut and we know he's not far and it's like and so you and I were chatting about that before we got on here and hit record it's like you know we our family's been hunting this property for 35, 40 years and you kind of get stuck in a rut and, you know, it's fun bouncing ideas and showing people, you know, outsiders looking in and looking at the topography of your property and where you're seeing this action and say, you know, 
have you thought about checking this out? Because there's, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's spots that we never go just because we never go there. It's not because we've all decided this that's is a sanctuary. We're not going to pressure or whatever. So That was last year's deer. That was the buck I killed last year. Not in a million years if I would ever looked at this piece on Onyx and been like, I'm going to kill a buck there. Nope, I was in a rut. I, you know, the guy up the roads, you know, he his property butts up to my father-in-law's. We walked it one day in a pouring rainstorm. I smelled a buck in there. You could smell him. I said, there's a buck in this bedding in here. I went in there like three days later. It was snowing and raining, snowing and raining. It was below 35 degrees. It was cold and rainy. I got soaked. I saw him get up out of his bed. He had two does with him. I was able to play the game. I grunted at that deer four times. On the fourth time, he finally turned. Well, he had no reason to leave those does. I just pissed yeah. him off enough to where he needed to come over and check that out. And it was amongst his bedding. That's all it was. He cut through. I went in there with a lone wolf, did a hang and hunt, and I killed him at 15 yards. It's just it's that's nothing I would have looked on a map and like, I'm going to kill a deer there. No, I just, yeah. it's just you got to, like, look around and be like, wow, you know, I've done this for so long it ain't working so something's got to give so and it's the thing is is hunters especially in the state i I think it's you know it's 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 crazy what you can come up and you you know as well as i you can get away with some stuff sometimes and it surprises you you're like never in a million years would that ever work again well it worked that time so you never (laughs) that's all that matters yeah and that's that's it you know and that's that's the crazy that's the crazy part of it and it's you a bucks court everyone they talk about a bucks court area you know during a run a buck could go mile two three four five you never know that tarzan that we had a photo of um that sub 80 deer and change four years ago here off the farm um we had photos of them all both seasons when when you say when you say sub when you say sub 80 what do you mean by that he ended up grossing. He ended up being 173 and change, the typical 10. He was 184 as a non-typical. They put him in the book. The neighbor ended up harvesting him, actually. Um, they put him in the book as a typical 10, and he was Boone. Um, wow. He was, he's an absolute giant. Um, biggest deer I've seen down here, obviously. Uh, I've seen numerous, numerous deer with the same characteristics as him. Um, I killed a 9.3 years ago who had the same frame, um, same main frame as him. Definitely a son of his. Um, mm-hmm. We had a 150s deer that we found um, up in an orchard off the property who we called Titan. I saw that deer two Augusts ago um, when we were out looking for you know nuisance nuisance tags in August um, to fill you know shoot a doe or two. We saw him in the beans, and I don't know. We're guessing he had gotten clipped by a car because there was no reason for this deer. He was as healthy as healthy can be. We we don't know, um, but a, a guy who runs runs horses on the property and, and and rides the trails pretty often. We found him up in the orchard dead. Um, mm. hadn't heard anybody had no wounds on him, no nothing. But he hit everything that Tarzan had. He had same exact frame, same kickers to a T. Um, it, it, it's it's pretty crazy, but I mean, we had photos of Tarzan here all summer, all bow season, and then all of a sudden, midway through gun, they got a photo of him three and a half miles away down on the lake. And wow. guys were like, "Is this the same deer?" And I said, "That's exactly the same deer." And my father-in-law at first was like, "That's not the same deer." I'm like, "Yeah, it is. It's him." But then again, you could have a buck that has a core area that is is in a you know a 50 acre woodlot and he doesn't go anywhere. If he's got food, he's got does, he's got cover, he's got everything, he's got water. If he doesn't want to leave, he doesn't have to leave. Right. So it's just, it's you might have deer like that too. That you might have two hundred acre piece, and he's literally spending most of his time on twenty five acres of that two hundred acres. You you just don't know. Yeah. You just got to find where that piece is, and and you're probably going to get one shot at it. And I think that's the that's, that's it, the man. big like, thing there. We literally, we put so much time in, and, we, you know, we love this game. And, and if you get that one opportunity, that's all you're going to get. I mean, if you get a second one, God bless you, that's great. But yeah. it's, it's – and you know it, too. I mean, when you see a shooter coming, you're like, that's – well, <laughs> yeah. you got to capitalize. I, that, that's so would you, would, you agree, would you agree with, with the statement that, you know, during an archery season, you really – 
when it comes down to it, you know, you might see an absolute pile of deer and get out yep. 20, 30 times, but you really only have one or two good opportunities to actually shoot a buck. Yep. Would you agree I, with that? Uh, I, I, I fully, agree. I mean, and again, what, what I'm trying to kill and what you're trying to kill might be different from what anyone else is trying to kill. If you get what I'm saying, yeah. it's, yeah, yeah. I, I might hunt, it, it, you know, it's tough now because I have two little ones and my wife, she's she's an angel. She lets me do what I do, but it, it's I might hunt so hard during the rut and stress myself out, and you're literally hunting for four seconds of glory, literally. I mean, you're right. putting all this time in, all this, you know, hanging sets, and I do hanging bank sets all the time, hanging hot sets. I'll watch deer, and then I'll move in with that with my, you know, standing sticks, and that's, you know, and we'll talk about it more. Like, I really am, am going to, I'm going to pick up a saddle here soon. I think I could capitalize on the saddle very much. So a lot of my buddies yeah. have went that route. Um, it, you're, you're doing all this work and prep for a couple seconds of, of, of glory, if you will. And, yeah. and it's tough because you can go, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate down here. I can harvest, you know, a, a, a younger buck almost every other time in a stand because we have the deer numbers, but you're not looking for that. You're looking for Mr. Big, if you will. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, right. it just depends on what you want, what your goals are. Well, I think where I, where I would want to steer this conversation, you know, everybody's goals are, they can be whatever that you want them to be, but yep. you have to, you have to learn to put yourself into those situations. You can be lucky and you can, you know, you can be in the right spot at the right time, but, year after year, you know, you'll get better and better. And I can speak for myself. I mean, I've every year for the last five years, I've had opportunity four or five years, whatever. Last year I shot a a decent eight point, two year old eight point with my bow. I was tickled pink happened like in a matter of seconds. And the three, the three, the three years, the three years prior, I had the biggest bucks I've ever had the opportunity to shoot at each year I had one opportunity and I met, I missed the shot all three times, but I put myself in that situation. So I won. I, w- I was victorious in one way because I put myself in the position, but I need to make feel, that shot. You've got to feel good about yeah. that. You've, you've done, right. you, you literally completed what most hunters won't. You know what I mean? You've yeah. get, you've given yourself that opportunity. And that's, that's the big thing. Yeah. So if you're, you know, and I've got one of the other guys that I'm going to have on here uh, for this week is is my buddy Connor, and I had him on last week to share. It. He's he's new to, he's relatively new to hunting, five six years in, and he hasn't harvested a deer with his bow yet. And uh, he was all fired up last week heading into the weekend. He had seen some good movement, and uh, and he he got himself an opportunity to shoot shoot a buck last Saturday. And I'll let you know let him share his story on what happened, but. You know, it's not always going to be a fairy tale scenario, and you know oh you've got to learn from all those things and don't get disappointed. Is there's a lot of new hunters out there. There's a lot of people who, you know, have been successful but don't necessarily couldn't put their finger on how they did it. And you know, you got to learn how to be, you got to learn how to be successful and consistent. It's not something that just comes automatically. You know, it's it's oh no, like, like we've all said, learned. like we've all said it, man. Like I would rather be lucky all day long than good. And that's, yeah. and that's it. It's, it's, it's big time luck is all it is. Um, if you, if you have skills and you can put those skills to work and, and, and they work for you, that's huge. But yep. when it comes down to it, mother nature is mother nature. That buck's going to go where he wants to go. That doe is going to walk where she wants to walk. All we can do is, is, you know, put the puzzle pieces together and hopefully it's just, together enough to where we can get that one opportunity. And that's, that's the big thing. Yep. That's it, man. All right. Well, you and I could sit here and talk for two hours, clearly. Um, let's, uh, <laughs> let's wrap this conversation up and uh, I'm excited to reconnect with you and excited to hear about what you got going on. And uh, I know you, you know, there's a lot of other stuff I want to chat with you about. You're getting big into, uh, you're going to get your guiding license for, for fishing, well, you're going to primarily use it for fishing here in New York, right? Yep, I uh, I have my New York State guides license. Um, starting, I starting a business. Um, do some drift boat trips on the Salmon River, Black River, and Oswego River. 
uh, as well as a couple lake trips for brown trout and walleye here in the spring. Um, and that's why I can't hunt the next three weekends. As crazy as that sounds, I'm actually in my captain's course. Uh, second oh, week of captain's course here, start Saturday, this Saturday and Sunday of my second week. So I actually oh. have to take my test for my captain's license November 14th, which I'm not crazy about by any means, but I have to, it's something you got to do if you're going to sacrifice motorized boat. Oh yeah. I mean, might as well get it out of the way now. And I, I hope that I have all next week off. Um, like I said, my father-in-law in the last couple of days, especially today has seen more buck movement driving around, you know, the town down here, um, midday good deer too. Um, he saw an absolute giant at about noon today, um, by himself in the goldenrod field, just just following a hedgerow down, just checking things out, and that's you know hopefully great things for what's to come. Um, and I'm really hoping I hit it next week. I can hunt Monday through Friday, so I have five days, and then the next the week after that I have a few days I can hunt too. But I'm hoping to get it done next week would be great. <laughs> it would be really awesome. Yep. So the stress off the plate, man. So. Yeah. All right, well, it was great catching up with you. We'll, uh, I'll be tapping on you here in the coming weeks to see what you're seeing out there and uh, get a report on that. And I look forward to also getting you on to kind of chat a little bit more about what you have going on with the guiding and everything else. So, Absolutely. Good luck, buddy. Shoot straight. Yeah, no, thank you. Be safe. I'll talk to you. All right, see you. Bye. Yeah, bye.